this is your host, Ray Rose, for Vegas Unlimited TV. Enjoy the show! for Vegas Unlimited TV and I'm here today with your VU TV teens, Kaylee and Logan. Guys, why are we here today and where are we again? Yes, Rain, we are here at the National Atomic Testing Museum in the center of Las Vegas and we are about to take a tour of what's inside. Today we're going to interview with Mr. Alan Palmer, the CEO of the National Atomic Testing Museum. We're going to learn about the Cold War, the hard times of all the people living here in the 1950s. Hmm, I'm so excited to learn some more. Let's hear it out from our VU TV team. So we are here now with Mr. Alan Palmer. What do you think we could expect to find inside today? What you can expect to find here in the National Atomic Testing Museum is one of the nation's 37 national museums. It's not a very large number. And this museum tells a story about America's nuclear weapons testing out here in the desert uh, and north of Las Vegas. Only 65 miles from the heart of Las Vegas, they were testing atomic bombs. And they tested almost 1,000 of them by the time that the test site was open. So people can come here and learn about that story. They can also learn a little bit about the Area 51, which was a part of the test site uh, that's really, really secret. <laughs> so will you give us a tour inside? That's a great idea. Let's go take a look. Let's go! This is a really unique place. Where did the founders get the concept for this idea? Well, it is a very neat place. And it was founded by a bunch of engineers and physicists and scientists who worked out at the test site back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. So they had the first-hand story of what they did out there and they then wanted to put that into a museum, so that's why they started it. Wow, that's awesome. And that was started about eight years ago when we opened this museum in 2005. Since then, it's become a national museum, and it's one of only 37 national museums in the whole country. And it's right here in Las Vegas. Nice, that's amazing. amazing. So what are some of the cool... Another high five. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the coolest things that teams could do here? Well, some of the coolest things teens can do here is learn about the geopolitical struggle of the Cold War. That sounds kind of very high-minded, but it really was a battle for freedom that occurred with the old Soviet Union in the United States years ago. And they can learn about how all that went down right here in the museum. Nice, that's awesome. They can also learn about the secrets of Area 51, which most people don't know about, but they've read or seen movies about. They can find out a lot about that here, too. So, Alan, we're standing in front of this large artifact. Can you tell us something about it? Well, this is indeed large, although this is a scale model of a, a downhole package. This was a, a device that was lowered down a vertical shaft that was drilled about 1,000 to 3,000 feet underground. And they would take this with a nuclear device and put it down underground, seal it up, and then set it off. That was the underground testing of the nuclear weapons. And this one actually, although it looks kind of big, it's only one-fifth the scale of the real one. So the real one was five times as big as this one. That's huge. Oh my god. This is, this is as big as we can make it to get in here. Yeah. <laughs> so it had to be a little smaller. So how exactly did they set the bombs off? Well, the bombs that they, they set off uh, were two different kinds. 
The above ground test, they put a bomb on a tower or they dropped it from an airplane. If it was dropped from the aircraft, it was armed and set off by uh, the bombardier in the airplane. For the, the tests that were on the ground though, those were set off at a control point. And that's where we're standing right now, is a replica of the control point. And it's a place where they had one guy, a test director, who was in charge of setting off the bomb, and he literally would press a button and set it off. And then that was how it happened. So it's a little different. It's kind of like NASA, when they would launch the, the Apollo and the, and the, uh, the uh, space shuttle. Uh, there was one guy in charge. Nobody could tell them what to do, not even the president. And that was the same way here. When they're getting ready to set a test off, they didn't let anybody else in, and there was one guy in charge. Wow, that's a lot of pressure on that one yeah. guy. Yeah, he was responsible if it didn't work out. Yeah. So how did the Cold War and atomic bomb testing affect daily life? Well, it was, it was everywhere. Uh, it was like the river that ran through it. That thought about being bombed was everywhere. Uh, the government was really good about telling people about how to take care of themselves in civil defense. Uh, so that message got everywhere in society at the time. But it was also kind of troubling at times. You know, kids had to do practice drills in school. They had to learn how to duck and cover, which meant they had to duck under their desk and cover their heads up in case there was a nuclear explosion. And they did these tests regularly. And then people had to learn where their underground shelters were. They had to learn how to survive on rations and things. And even blocks and neighborhoods had wardens to make sure that people knew where to go. Uh, this picture behind me is a good example of how the schools would test. Kids would, would lay on the ground, duck and cover, find any place they could to avoid the effects of the bomb if it was to go off in their neighborhood. It is so scary. That would be really scary, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And so the things behind us, too, reflect that. Uh, there were cereal boxes that had atomic decoder rings in them. There were nuclear atomic fireball candy. Uh, the, even the yearbooks had pictures of atomic bombs on the covers from the high schools here in Las Vegas. And believe it or not, uh, if you were a teenager in 1957 in the high school here, they issued you dog tags so that if there was a bomb that went off, they'd know who was who if they had to go out and recover people. That's so scary. That's oh really God. scary. Holy cow, that's so good. That was so much fun. It was, was so great really learning cool. about everything. Well, I'm really glad you enjoyed it. There's a lot to see, isn't there? Yes, yes there is. So, yeah, so right now we're in front of the Air 51. Is that a myth or reality? Ah, that's what people have to discover when they come. This is the formerly very secret story about Area 51. It's a story of achievement and solving problems in aviation and, and science. But up until two years ago, we really couldn't talk about this. Yeah. Now we can. But with it also is a story about aliens and UFOs, which people have rumored to be out at Area 51. So we're gonna show a little bit of both in here and let people decide for themselves what they believe. Yeah. That's a very, very cool exhibit. It is, it's very cool. Sounds really awesome. So are there any websites or social media that kids at home can look up? Sure, they can find out a lot more about the museum at our website, which is uh, nationalatomictestingmuseum.org. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. And so people can find out what's going on here. They can see some of the exhibits. Uh, they can learn about programs here at the museum they can participate in. So what days and times are you open for kids to come and check things out? We're open every day of the year except for New Year's Day and Christmas. And we're open from 10 o'clock till 5 o'clock weekdays and 12 o'clock to 5 o'clock on Sundays. And there are some discounts for military and for seniors and for students and residents. So they ought to come down and see what's happening. For sure. Come check it out. It's really yeah. great inside. You guys should really check it out. Yeah. It's cool. Very cool. And as we say around here, they come here, they're going to have a blast. <laughs> <laughs> so again, this is Cammie and Logan, your BU TV teens. That was really awesome, you guys. Hey, Great you. job, Thank as you. always. Don't go away, we'll be right back for more.
Um, Rhythm Kitchen is um, a little different. It's kind of a different animal for Las Vegas. You know, it's, there's been several uh, New Orleans type restaurants in Las Vegas, but uh, they seem to come and go. I think you know our commitment, being a local, being here, uh, being in the restaurant business in Las Vegas for 30 years, I think that we're, we're going to be here to stay. Rhythm Kitchen is a, a, a large footprint location, um, great for parties and events, wedding receptions, uh, birthday parties, company parties, corporate meetings. Uh, we have a large event area that seats 250. Um, and you know, feel free to, to call us up, 702-767-8438, uh, and, and book your party with us. My Vegas Magazine, for locals, by locals. My Vegas Magazine is for anyone who wants to get the most out of our wonderful city. We cover the topics you care about, including beauty and health, home and garden, kids, family, and senior living. My Vegas Magazine brings you a vast array of articles to serve as a resource for you and your family to live a more fulfilled life in our community, including a unique perspective from Mayor Carolyn Goodman in her feature column, From the Mayor's Desk. Get your free copy of My Vegas Magazine by visiting MyVegasMag.com. Rain Rose for Vegas Unlimited TV and now I'm now here at the world famous Arizona last stop for our bullets and burgers experience follow me and I'm now with Ross Mann the owner of bullets and burger Ross what is bullets and burger bullets and burgers is uh, something that I created uh, probably about a year ago whereas we do, uh, there's two different things to it. One is we pick up from all the hotels. It's actually an outdoor machine gun experience. But when we pick up from the hotels, we pick up at 8 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. every day, daily. Um, we take out, drive out to the Hoover Dam Bridge for a quick photo op of the new bridge. And they also get a photo of the Hoover Dam and Lake Mead also. They have a guided tour guide on their um, van with them that picks them up with, tells them everything about how the dam was created, Hoover Dam and so forth. After their photo op of the Hoover Dam, then they travel on the other side to the Lake Mead Protected National Forest and drive through there to an open area to the Mojave Desert. At that point, they arrive at a place called Arizona Last Stop. Arizona Last Stop is a 32 acre commercial property. Um, and the front of it has the restaurant, which is a 5,000 square foot restaurant bar. And right out back is our machine gun ranges. So what it is, is it's based on a pickup from the hotel, straight to the Hoover Dam, straight to Arizona Last Stop. They get to shoot one of the machine gun packages that they pick out, which we have every kind of machine gun that you can imagine from a 50 cal sniper rifle to the, what they call the deuce to the 50 cal machine gun, to pistols, to Desert Eagle guns. Um, just everything you can imagine. After they finish shooting, then they get to come inside the restaurant and enjoy one of our world famous burgers. That's the best part. Yeah, well, I, they say they're both in. The, you know, they got the burgers and the machine guns, so that's what Bullets and Burgers is. Yeah. It's an experience, it's four hours door to door. It's right. pickup from location, and you get to come shoot machine guns, see a little of the Hoover Dam Bridge, mm -hmm. and have a wonderful, awesome burger, Angus burger. Well, tell us, what sets you apart from other Las Vegas ranges? Okay, well, typically all the ranges in Las Vegas, every range in Vegas is indoors. Mm -hmm. So when you shoot indoors, you have to shoot behind glass. You don't get to shoot with a group, okay? So basically you're shooting one person behind glass, very loud, very noisy, at a target, and then you're finished. Here what you get to do is you get to shoot outside in military-type bunkers. So with a group the whole group gets to come with you you get to take photos each person can take photos videotape it it's a um outdoor atmosphere you get to see the bullets is that actually. how you call unique desert storm experience that's exactly atmosphere. right so you feel like you're out in a desert storm area you know it's not commercialized it's not with all the fancies you're down in bunkers just like a military bunker shooting your machine guns so that's basically the difference plus the fact that we use real bullets and the bullets that they use in the military. So where you shoot indoors, you're shooting the lead-filled bullets, so completely different. And the other thing is you can't shoot the high-powered guns that we have here. The 50 cal guns are, are something that you cannot shoot indoors at all. And then the instructors are ex-military? Oh, they all are. You each get your own range officer. I would say 98% of the people that shoot here have never shot a machine gun before. So. 
Um, basically, they're with you every second, and they sit there with you. And what happens is they um, give you a single file. Get, to, get used to it. You shoot one bullet, then you can shoot a triple fire. Then they'll let you go rip it automatically, fully automatic. So tell us about the package here. Okay, so we have four different packages here. Basically, this is a bronze package. This includes two machine guns of your choice. You get to pick them out. Um, the silver package includes two machine guns and what they call a belt-fed machine gun. Um, the gold package is two machine guns, a belt-fed machine gun, and what is very popular, the 50 cal sniper rifle. That's the gun that they use in, uh, you watch all the movies and they shoot a mile and a half out and watch that bullet go all the way across there. And then our uh, platinum package is basically our 50 cal package. What that is, is you get five rounds of a Desert Eagle pistol, which is a 50 cal pistol. You get seven rounds of the sniper rifle, the 50 cal. And then of course the deuce, which is the biggest machine gun you could possibly ever shoot. It's a 50 cal machine gun. And then you get to choose any machine gun. So those are the four different packages. You have a choice of picking the packages and going on the tour, or you can self-drive out and you take $50 off each package. So if you want to drive out to Arizona Last Stop to experience our bullets and burgers. So the minimum package is the bronze is $159 and the platinum is $479. That is correct. And out of that is it includes the transportation, uh -huh. it includes the Hoover Dam Bridge, it includes your machine guns, and it includes your world famous burger with a soda or a draft beer. And by the way, one of the most popular packages we have is our gold package and our platinum package. In those packages you get to shoot a 50 cal sniper rifle or the 50 cal machine gun, that's the deuce. The most popular people love to shoot from all over the world and locals out of Vegas is this bullet right here. This is what you would call the 50 cal sniper rifle bullet. And if you're gonna shoot the machine gun, you're gonna shoot one of these on a belt fed for the big deuce. It's called the deuce, that's the nickname of it. Okay. So what are your prices for the burgers? Well, what we do is the, the burger actually we load at a local discount the local discount is $7.95. It comes with the burger, half pound Angus burger, it comes with the fresh cut french fries. So that's our local discount. You come out here and we're going to pay $7.95 for that burger. Oh, wow. With the fresh cut french fries. Wow. And now I'm really curious to know how the world famous Last Up Arizona burgers are being made. So it's time to raid your kitchen. Do you mind? I don't mind. <laughs> Dr. Sean Sue's liquid facelift is a non-invasive alternative to plastic surgery. A liquid facelift can achieve gentle lifts of facial features, reduction in wrinkles, restoration of smile, and a more energetic look. Sexy Vegas Skin combines three non-invasive procedures of Botox, dermal filler, and laser skin rejuvenation and resurfacing. Let Sexy Vegas Skin and Dr. Sean Sue Bring back your sexy. a Desert Eagle made by Magnum Research, 50 caliber semi-automatic. And Mark, what about that gun? Okay, this one here is Smith & Wesson 500, to date one of the biggest handguns made. It is 50 caliber. Heavy. You're very heavy. What about this gun? 
This is a Barrett M107 sniper rifle. Shoots a 50 BMG. This round right here. What age do you have to be to have this experience? Well, you have to be 10 years old and up to any age, and under 18, you need to have an adult or a parent or guardian with you. Oh, wow, 10 years old. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you. We're now at the shooting range with Ali, one of the instructors here, and also prior service with the U.S. military. Yes. So, how do I get started? Oh, with this thing here? This thing right here is a M249 quad automatic weapon. This one shoots a .223 or a 5.56 millimeter um, ammo. And this one's gonna come out in a belt like this. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a link. And so that way you can shoot it and just keep on shooting and you're just gonna keep going. Um, right now what you're gonna do is, are you right-handed? Uh, yes. Okay, right-handed. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put this right on your right shoulder. You're gonna get your hand all the way high on the grip, right? Keep your finger off the trigger mm -hmm. until you're ready to fire. So your left hand's gonna be right here and you're gonna rest your cheek right on your hand. And you're gonna look down the sight, you're gonna see a red dot. That red dot, you wanna pull it right here on the groove, and then you wanna pick out one of those targets out there on, out there about 100 meters, it's gonna be a hubcap. You just pick one of those left or right. And then what you're gonna do, when you get on a target, I will put on fire for you, and then we're gonna go ahead and step behind you, and you're gonna go ahead and shoot. And what you do is you're gonna squeeze and let go, and that way it gives you about three to four rounds. Or you just wanna hold it down, and you're just gonna keep going until you run out of the belt. A safety precaution is that if you have any problems, go ahead and step away from the weapon and I'll go ahead and step in front and then I'll go ahead and clear whatever's wrong with it. Mm -hmm. Alright? And I'll be right there next to you, so if any problems, I'll be right on top of it. Okay. Alright. Okay, so what we're going to do is, right now it's empty, mm -hmm. what we're going to do is go ahead and dry fire it and go ahead and put it in your shoulder. Get everything hand in like that and then when you're comfortable, I'll go ahead and load it for you. Okay. Okay, so you keep this thing off, go ahead and put this on your shoulder. Right shoulder. Right shoulder, just like that. Just like against your butt, against your shoulder, just like that. And then your right hand is going to be way up there, and then your left hand is going to be gripping it, just like this. And you're just going to put your hand, your cheek right there in your hand. So nothing's going to come back, so go ahead and put your cheek right here. There you go. Just like that. Always keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to fire. Okay, you see your red dot? Yes. Okay, you just want to put a groove right there and pick up one of those targets out there. Alright, you comfortable like that? Alright, you want to go ahead and load it? All right. Drop the trigger until you're on fire, okay? I'm gonna put it on fire and then I'm gonna move behind you, okay? okay? I'm gonna hold your shoulder just in case you fall. Alright, you ready? Yes. Alright, go ahead. And Ali, tell me about this gun. This gun here, this is an M249 squad automatic weapon. This one shoots the 5.56. This is what the United States military issues their soldiers. In a squad, it comprises of six soldiers. So two saws are going to be uh, given to each soldier. Mm -hmm. So with this thing here, they can put enough rounds to keep uh, the enemy's head down while the rest of the soldiers move forward. And of course, you, you fired it and you know how it feels. Yeah. So it's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Tell me about this world famous burger. Why is it famous in the first place? 
Well, basically, we are the gateway to the Grand Canyon Skywalk, as you know. And so we have travelers that come in here all over the world that stop at our location, come in, have something to eat, something to drink. And basically what they've done after they've eaten their burger, we give everybody uh, basically a piece of paper, eight and a half by 11, we give them some crayons and markers, and we let them draw about the burgers. And as you can see in the wall up here, um, people from all over the world have been here from every country has had our hamburger here at this location. And that's how it becomes world famous. Tell me about this skywalk. Is this close to the skywalk? Well, we're approximately about an hour and 15 minutes from the skywalk, but we're 14 miles from the turnoff from our location here to the Grand Canyon West Rim of the Skywalk. And everybody from Vegas or whoever comes in and stops in here, what we do for them is we do what they call a preferred check-in ticket. It's the same price, same cost, but by stopping in here and ticketing here, you get to expedite the lines. You go straight through it and you don't have to wait with the big lines that they have there at the Skywalk. So if anyone coming from Vegas comes in, they get a Skywalk ticket and they come get their burger, their 795 Angus burger, and then uh, they can shoot right on up to the Skywalk from here. Got it. That's priority check-in right there. It's a, yeah, it's a, it's a VIP check-in, kind of yeah. like at the hotels. Ross, I had so much fun. Thank you so much. Can you invite our viewers? Sure. Anybody that would like to come out, we're just uh, basically 25 minutes on the other side of Hoover Dam, which is Arizona Last Stop. And um, the different things you guys can all come out here and do, you can get the world famous burger for $7.95. You also can shoot machine guns as long as you bring your parent. We've got the age bracket of 10 years old all the way up to 18 with parent and guidance. Um, you can get your lottery tickets, Omega Millions, Powerball, um, you get scratchers. Just a nice day drive out event. Um, by, while you're coming out here, if you've never been onto the new Hoover Dam Bridge, you can also stop off on that on the way out because we're just about 25 minutes from the bridge. So uh, I invite all you to come out and enjoy your day out here at Arizona Last Stop and Bullets and Burgers. And again, guys, I had so much fun. So don't forget to check out bulletsandburgers.com. Don't go away. We'll be right back. And Mark, tell me about this gun. That gun is a Barrett M107 sniper rifle um, used in the military today currently, and it uses oh, a good. 50 BMG round. Okay. Now I've had my burger, and it's time to get down to business. Behind you, okay? okay. I'm gonna hold your shoulder just in case you fall. All right? Um, can I just not shoot, please? <laughs> Mikey. <laughs> My Vegas Magazine, for local, by locals. My Vegas Magazine is for anyone who wants to get the most out of our wonderful city. We cover the topics you care about, including beauty and health, home and garden, kids, family, and senior living. My Vegas Magazine brings you a vast array of articles to serve as a resource for you and your family to live a more fulfilled life in our community, including a unique perspective from Mayor Carolyn Goodman in her feature column, From the Mayor's Desk. Get your free copy of My Vegas Magazine by visiting myvegasmag.com.
Thank you so much everyone for watching. We really love sharing these great stories with you. Check us online at vegasunlimited.tv. See you guys next week.